All right. Hey, it's Chris Petrie. Thanks so much for coming by. I'm really happy you're here with me, with all of us here. We're actually doing a great, beautiful painting here. We're doing a seascape with boathouses, fishing shacks, sailboats, tons of water. So we're going to show you how you're going to do the you're going to actually work on the glazing technique on this video. So the glazing technique is so much fun. The first wash is nothing but tons of water and tons of blue washes of sky color flowing down the whole page. That's it. First wash is just all nothing but flowing water and washes going down the whole painting. Once that's done and then you let it dry or you can use a blow dryer and dry it off in like five, 10 minutes. Then we're going to start getting in our middle and uh, darker tonal values where we're going to do our fishing shacks, boat houses, and our rock formations along the coastal areas here to finish out the painting. It's a quick moving painting. It's fun. It's exciting. It's not going to take that long and you'll get to practice the glazing technique, which is a really important technique to learn in watercolor. So you'll know by um, actually uh, working with my videos over the weeks and months ahead. If you're just brand new here and this is your first time stopping by, thank you so much for coming by. I really am happy you're here. You landed at the right spot. We're doing the whole enchilada of information, oodles of details. We're doing sharp detail. We're doing tons of factoids, chock full of nuts, watercolor techniques and methods so that you learn everything you need to know about watercolor. And that's really the basics of it. If you can learn the basics of watercolor here on my channel, which I cover week after week, month after month, and year after year, you will learn to create beautiful watercolor paintings. No question about it. It's just a little bit of work for you on your end. You just have to work along with me each week, a little bit at a time. If you want to really make a lot of progress, you can actually practice some drawing and sketching during the week um, in a sketch pad or some printer paper, whatever you have, a little bit of paper, you scratch down some quick drawings, maybe five, 10 minutes every day. That's going to go a long way. And then uh, once it comes time to do painting on the weekend sessions, when we're doing our videos, you'll be all prepped and ready to go. You'll be practicing your sketching. So you'll be able to get these basic sketches down and get yourself uh, working with the washes, the paints, and uh, the beautiful uh, medium of watercolor. There's nothing better than watercolor. All right, so let's get started. All right, we're going to get right into the painting, which is basically, let's do the sketch first, which is going to go real quick. There's nothing really too, uh, uh, you know, uh, there's nothing too difficult about this drawing. The drawing is basically some quick little sketches of some shacks along this coastal line here. You have to get a few little distant mountain lines here with your sketch and really uh, just a touch of uh, sketch here in the, the bottom of the painting, which is some rocks on the bottom here. And other than that, the rest co goes really easy. So you really will have a fun time doing this. This is going to be a real fun painting for you. Okay. And always remember, we're here for you. Leave comments in the comment section if you want. You have questions, you have um, anything you comment you want to make, leave them in the comment section. We uh, There's gr tons of great people here in my channel that will answer your questions. If I don't get to them, others will and uh, we'll have a fun time all together uh, on the watercolor journey, okay? All right, so let's get started with this. All right, it's Chris Petrie. We're here, we're back again. We're having a lot of fun. We're gonna enjoy a nice seascape scene right now. We're gonna paint this scene um, in the glazing technique. So basically we'll start out with some lighter washes We'll, we'll kind of cover the whole sheet of paper with some lighter washes and then we'll start uh, building up our darks on top of the lighter washes once we're um, kind of getting started with those really light medium to light washes across the whole paper. <clears throat> so let's, uh, you saw the finished painting just now, a few seconds ago, just at the beginning of the video. And I always like to do that. I like to show the finished painting right at the beginning of the video. So this way you can kind of see what you're going to be working on. And I think that really works out good because if you can kind of see the beginning um, a few seconds or, you know, 20, 30 seconds of the video and you see what you're going to actually be working on, you're going to be more satisfied and happy that you kind of see that's what you're going to actually be completing throughout this uh, tutorial here. So let's get started. Um, the first thing we're going to do, of course, is do our sketch. So um, let's get started with that. 
First thing we'd like to do is uh, let's just kind of go over our, um, I'm using a mechanical pencil here. This is a uh, Pentel 120 uh, A3 DX and it's a 0 0.7 millimeter, 0 0.7 millimeter. And the easy way to find this type of a, if you want to use a mechanical pencil and you want to use this exact one, they're really easy to find. You know, you can find them anywhere like Amazon, online, of course, anything. Amazon usually has all products, basically. I don't, you know, most times when I look on Amazon, I find all the products that I need. But anyway, if, if you just look for the blue, you just type in Pentel 120A3, 0 0.7, and you look for the blue, the nice uh, blue mechanical pencil just like this with a rubber gripper on the uh, front portion of the uh, pencil where, you, where you're going to be holding your pencil. You have a nice little rubber gripper here. Really nice, kind of makes it easier to hold on to the pencil and it doesn't slide or, you know, if you get sweaty and you're working a lot and you're doing a lot of drawing, this, this front uh, portion of the pencil works absolutely phenomenal. So and that's all you have to do to look up this type of pencil. So let's do this. Let's get, get our, let's do our rectangle. And this is a portrait style painting. So we're going to do it in a portrait format. And we just do our border around the tape. So I've already put down some artist tape. And if I zoom out just a touch, you kind of see that's right there. That's the bottom of the tape right there. And I just go right around with my pencil just to make the border just like this with my pencil, my mechanical pencil. It's a Pentel. And I go right around and do that. Okay, and I'll zoom in a little bit just so it's a little bit uh, more, you know, close. You know, you can see more of a close up of what I'm doing. And so now we've got just a real simple. The, the basic thing I always say when you're starting out your painting, your composition, your painting, try to get a, um, try to, for, if you're a watercolor artist and you're just starting out, and thank you, for, I, I want to welcome you if you're just starting out with watercolors and you're just starting here on my first video here, this, maybe this is the first time you've come here to my video and you're saying, oh wow, this is really exciting, Chris is doing all these cool things here on, on YouTube. This is one of the most important things you can remember when you're going to be doing watercolor paintings, you want to... Maybe you go out to your local store, if you have some local stores by your um, place where you live, like Michael's or um, AC Moore or a Blick store or like a um, different uh, art stores that they have out there, you know, um, art, art supply stores. Or if not, you can go online on Amazon or on different uh, websites. You can look up uh, pre-cut mats. This is all this is. This is a pre-cut mat. And basically the, the main thing I want to mention here right from the beginning is if you're going to make an effort and do a painting, let's make sure that you have it set up so that it's in a in a proper format so that if you want to, if it comes out really good, you can put a mat on it and put it in a frame right away and it's 100% great. You could sell it, you could give it as a gift, you could put it into a showing at a local uh, art uh, gallery or, you know, maybe there's some art... Uh, exhibitions going on in your local area or maybe you're going to like you're going to give some uh it's the holidays maybe you have some sort of holiday you want to give some gifts birthdays christmas time kwanzaa you know um you'll have um all types of holidays things like that if you create a beautiful painting why not start out right from the beginning by just using a pre-cut mat like this you buy like three or four of these different sizes. So this is like, let's take a look at this one. This one is a, this is basically a, like a nine and a half window by a seven and a half window. So nine and a half by seven and a half window. And the actual, the actual mat itself for the frame size is a 14 by 11. So this is a 11 by 14 pre-cut mat. You can kind of see this, right? This is a pre-cut mat, 11 by 14. You get this, you set it down on your paper. And what I do is I just basically make little dots in the corners here where the window is, the window opening. And then I put my tape 
like a little bit beyond that, maybe like an inch or a half an inch beyond that. This way you have extra room. So this way when you put your mat down, you can move your mat around and get it just perfect where your painting is, like that. But this is the way to go. You definitely want to do this. You definitely want to have three or four different size mats and you just need to buy one of each size. So buy a couple different sizes. This here is a little smaller size. You can use something like this. You can also purchase something like this. And uh, you know, this is something like the mat, pre-cut mat size is eight by 10. So you have an eight by 10 mat and the window size is four and a half by six and a half. So these you have in your studio when you're working, whether you're working in your kitchen, your bedroom, your living room, your basement, maybe out on a porch, wherever you work with your watercolors or outdoors, wherever you're working, take your pre-cut mat and just make sure you set it down on your watercolor paper. Make a couple dots in all four corners and then make your painting a little bit larger than this window opening here on your pre-cut mat. And this way when you're done with your painting, you can just put a mat over the top of it set it into a frame if you want, if it comes out really wonderful and uh, beautiful. And you could give it as a gift. You could put it on your own wall in your home. You can um, put it for sale on the internet. Of course, you have all these different options. As an artist, you're the artist. You're going to have all these options when you're doing your watercolors. I want to make you aware of all of those options. But it's really critical if you can do that. Make sure you start out with a pre-cut mat that you can purchase online first. And then whenever you're creating any kind of painting or composition, use your mats, your pre-cut mats that you purchase. So this way at least, you know, it's real simple for you. If it comes out great, awesome, you just put a mat on top of it. You go out, you purchase a frame for it, and you're all set. Okay, so we have that all set up. And again, we're doing a, a basically a seascape. And, uh, you know, you can do seascapes in a landscape format. We're doing this in a portrait format. So our format is basically vertical. So our format for this painting is going to be somewhat vertical, like this. Versus a horizontal format, like this. Like a landscape format is like this. A portrait format is like this. We're using the portrait format here, like this. Like this. So we're using a portrait format. Okay. First thing we do is we say, how are we going to actually lay out our painting? Well, first thing we're going to do is kind of ask ourselves, what's going to look best? I say most times you're going to look really, your paintings will look really fantastic if you can do it on thirds. So if you just take your space divisions and say, okay, here's my space division. You've got a vertical here, portrait format here. If you go one thirds approximately like this and like this, which is one third up, two thirds, three thirds. If you do thirds, you're really going to be safe. One third, let's make that the uh, water line, the horizontal water line of the ocean and bay. We're going to make a beautiful bay scene here. So there we go. So let's make our bay, bay, bay line here. This is the ocean water coming into the bay like that. And that's one third up. If you want to measure it, that's fine too. You can always take your ruler and measure up and say, okay, how much is this? 10 inches. So this is a 10 inch horizontal, I mean a vertical line, 10 inches. So we say three and a quarter six and a half and ten and that gives us about a third each way now let's uh we're going to kind of make some rocks over here and some this is a sloping hill down into the water rocks and, and ground here like that. And then above that, we're going to have a actual
we're gonna have a boathouse here. So there we go, we made a boathouse here on the left with some hills and rocks going down into the water, like so. Pretty simple. Then uh, beyond here, let's do the same thing. Let's kind of make another And we're going to do this. We're going to make another boathouse over here. Like that. And you can always change things a little bit and say, you know what, maybe we're going to make this horizontal line for our water. Let's make that a little bit higher. Let's make that up here. Like this. Like that. So I just took my horizontal line where the ocean is, the distant ocean horizon line, like that. So we have another boathouse over here. And down over here we have another Boathouse over there, a little smaller boathouse there. And then as we go over here, there's maybe some more mountainous areas over here, like so. And then there's maybe another mountainous area over here in the foreground, a little bit closer to us. And if you want to erase a few lines as you go, feel free. But basically, you can see we're building up our drawing here, our sketch. So that's going to be our ocean line right across here. And then there's some sloping mountains that go down into the water. And then over here, we're going to maybe have some sailboats over here on the coastal area. So let's do some small sailboats. like this and a couple of sails like that maybe another boat over here like that so this one's a little bit higher up like that so you have a couple of sailboats over here along the coastal area in the distance and this is closer by us here and why not let's get a little more shoreline here, just to give us a little shoreline here, kind of leading us into the picture like this, over here. Okay, and that's not really too... It's really not too sophisticated or d difficult. And then we're going to have some distant mountains over here. Like that. And then over here in the foreground, let's make some foreground uh, rocks and uh, f foreground here. like that. All right, so here we have it. Let's zoom out a little bit. All right, that. There we go. All right, so we have some foreground rocks here. And we'll develop this with our paints. So just as long as we get a good silhouette here, we're sh we should be fine. We got here in our middle distance our wonderful boat houses here. Um, that trail into the distance, into the picture. So we have some kind of middle distance and then far distance over here, far distance over here, some sailboats that are setting uh, along the uh, horizon line of the uh, ocean here. And it's sort of like a bay scene. And then we have some distant mountains over here. And then of course, we're gonna have some beautiful sky wash and we're just gonna have fun with our sky wash and really just 
flow in some water and some washes, some water, lots of tons of water into our sky wash. We're going to let our sky wash just happen as it does. Really free, fun, exciting. And then uh, as we work down in here, we're going to do a little more details with our darker washes, our rocks, our buildings, our boathouses, some sailboats here. So you're going to see how we're really going to develop this in a really uh, straightforward fashion. We're going to go with the glazing technique, you know, technique again, which is let's do the lighter washes first, then we'll go in and do our darker washes on top. That should work out great for this painting because really it's a pretty good sized painting. And, uh, you know, the middle tones are the dominant force here. So we're going to have a lot of middle tones and then we're going to have some little more smaller spots of darker tonal values throughout this painting. So you can always think of your painting as darks and lights. What do you have in your painting? Darks and lights. Well, if you're going to have tons of middle tonal values and lighter tonal values, do those all first. And then you go in and you do your darkers over top. So that's kind of how I'm looking at this. This will be more of a glazing technique painting versus a la prima painting, which we'll always cover the two methods and techniques on my channel here. So don't worry. We're going to always cover all the techniques and methods that you need. We're going to do all the oodles of information you need, chock full of nuts information here on my channel. You never have to worry. So this is just the start. We're just getting our pencil drawing in and we're now completed with our pencil drawing. So I hope you've got up to speed here on our pencil drawing. It's pretty straightforward. Some mountains in the distance, some middle distance, sailboats, some boat houses here along and fish uh, shacks, fishing shacks along this coastal area. And then a little bit of foreground, uh, rocks and uh, foreground here. And then we're gonna have plenty of ocean water and plenty of big sky washes. And again, we're going to have our distant mountains here that are going to really, really be exciting in our painting. Okay, so let's uh, take a break. We'll come right back in just a few minutes and we'll start mixing up our colors. And I always want to mention to you first, before you start painting and you're going to get ready to mix your paints in your palette, make sure you get your palette cleaned up. So I made sure I spritzed my palette with plenty of fresh clean water so that I could just come in here like this right before I'm going to paint I can just go in and do a beautiful cleanup of my palette like so and look how good that looks I have beautiful a fresh clean palette to work with we're going to mix all brand new colors if you're working you know let's say you've done a painting last week or a few days ago and you have all kinds of muddy looking paint all over your palette the best bet is always spritz your palette with some water with a spritzer bottle like that. Spritz your paints, clean up your palette, take a paper towel, go in there, clean up all of your working area that you have and you're all ready to go. Okay, so we'll be right back. Okay, we've got our sketch done. We're gonna get ready to do our painting. Again, we're doing the glazing technique, which means we're gonna do a beautiful light wash across the whole paper here first to start with and then we're going to go in and do our darker darks for our rocks our foreground our middle distance our fishing shacks and boat houses and our sailboats over here in the uh, middle distance here and it's of course our mountains in the distance here but let's get some beautiful um, washes going a nice light glazing of everything across the paper so the first thing we're going to need is let's take a look i have to go find a brush here that will work out good okay i like to use this brush here you might see me I, i've used this many times on my channel it's a da vinci um 30 number 30 flat brush and I'm pretty sure the 30 is for millimeters. And it is 30 millimeters or three centimeters. This we're going to wet the whole paper with fresh clean water. And you can kind of see here, I have fresh clean water in a glass. I put it up over here. I have a sponge over here next to my glass, which is where my clean water is. This way I can check off some water, take off some water off my brush as I work. 
So sometimes you need a little more water in your brush, sometimes you need a little less. You always want to have your uh, sponge or maybe some paper towels or some tissues, whatever you need to dry off your brush a little bit. But this is what we're going to do. We're going to wet the paper with a light wash of clean, fresh clean, crystal clear water right along the whole paper. So let's just get the whole paper covered with that fresh clean water. Okay, that's really the simplicity of this glazing technique is you just get the whole paper covered. It doesn't have to be fancy or just get the whole paper covered. You know, you go side to side all the way down. Then you go up and down. This way you got you have the whole the whole paper covered like this. Okay, so you have the whole paper covered with a light wash of fresh clean water. Then we're going to go in and we're going to start mixing our colors. So let's do our sky washes to start with. Blue, cerulean blue, cobalt blue, French ultramarine blue. So mix up your three blues, French ultramarine blue, cobalt blue, cerulean blue. Get that into your sky wash for your sky wash. Take a little bit of burnt umber. Get a little bit of burnt umber and burnt sienna just to, you know, have a little bit of a, you know, grayish mix there. Like that. So now you have a beautiful, wonderful mix of colors. And then you add in a little bit of burnt umber and burnt sienna, just a little bit to your three blues, which is French ultramarine blue, cobalt blue, cerulean blue. So you mix your first, your first three blues for your sky wash and your water which is again French ultramarine blue, cobalt blue, cerulean blue. Then you just put a little touch of um, burnt sienna and burnt umber into that wash to just make it a little bit grayed down. You don't want to have a real um, too much of a um, you know too much chroma for your blue. You want to tone down your blue just a little bit if that makes sense. So now you kind of see we have a, a nice blue that's kind of toned down a little bit with some of that blue, with some of that uh, uh, burnt sienna and burnt umber. Just a little bit though, right? Then we go in there and we start putting that in. Add a little bit of water to it. Don't be afraid. Add some extra water to your, to your paper. And this is the fun of watercolor. You can experiment. Try doing two or three or four or five of these paintings and just try different ideas with the, the water, the colors. Maybe you'll add a little bit of like that. Maybe a little bit of um, burnt sienna in there. Let it flow on down like that. And then you obviously know you're going to have the same thing across your water. Your water is going to be the same colors. So you're just going to take those same colors and just put them right in the where the water is. The bay. So we have kind of like a, uh, a bay here where the uh, ocean is kind of coming in. It's like a little bit of a uh, bay area where the boats are, the fishing shacks, different things like this kind of have fun as you go but you know you're going to have a wonderful time and then you go in and get some darker darks here look let's put some French ultramarine blue mixed in there and let's get some of that in and then get some French ultramarine blue over here and over here look at how wonderful that looks and that's the great thing about watercolor you're actually creating a wonderful, beautiful, uh, exciting wash of colors all on your paper. You've wet your paper first, so you have lots, tons of water on there, and it just all flows perfectly down the paper. I have a slight tilt on my, my board, so I have a 2x4 under the top of my board up here. So if you can imagine, I have a masonite board with some foam on top of my masonite board. So it's an eighth inch, you know, it's pretty thin, eighth inch masonite board with foam, eighth inch foam 
board on top of that masonite board and I have a two by four up here at the top of my table. So my, you know, my table is, is level. My table is straight. It's like a kitchen table, but it's really a studio table. Obviously uh, I'm working in my studio here, but I have the two by four on my table, which lifts up my board a little bit. So my board is kind of pitched just a little bit down this way. Not much, an inch and a half at the top. And that allows me to have that paint flow down just a little bit as we put our first washes on here, if that makes sense. So I know some of you have asked really good questions like, Chris, can I use, you know, just a flat table and I don't need any pitch? That's fine too. You can do that. That works. But I would say it's maybe better to have a little bit of pitch on your board or your working surface. It tends to kind of work out good. Then you can blot a little bit of paint if you want with a tissue, if you think you might want to put a couple of lights in there. And I'll just dry up a little bit of the paint and water along the top and the sides. Just like that. So I go around my paper and I just lift up some of that excess water and paint that's kind of drifted off the paper. And that looks pretty good. Now, once we have this part completed, which is your washes, your first light washes across the whole paper, your light and middle tone values across this whole paper, now you have to let this dry, 100% complete dry so that it's actually, the paper becomes flat again and there's no buckles and, you know, hills and valleys in your paper, you want to make sure this is completely flat when you're done. So there's two ways to do that. You can wait about an hour or two till this all dries and flattens out, or you can take a blow dryer and blow dry this and in about five or 10 minutes, you'll have the paper again, nice and flat. And again, I did tape around the whole paper. So that helps so that once you start drying it, it will um, dry flat. And then you can start painting again along these, uh, areas here where we have our boathouses and our fishing shacks and our sailboats. So we're going to have a lot of fun as we come back. But I think right now we have a really beautiful wash across the whole paper. And now it's just a matter of getting in our darker darks and kind of, uh, you know, filling in the uh, colors here in this painting. And we will be set. Okay, so this is really fun again. I always mention too, if, you, if you're having a great time here on my video, please subscribe. It's on the right-hand side below. You click that subscribe button down there, right below here, and then you click on the notification bells. There's a little bell. Once you click subscribe, there's a little bell. Click on all notifications. And basically all that does is it just, the next time you open up YouTube in a week or two from now, you'll see some of my videos, my latest videos in your YouTube page, your YouTube uh channel when you open up YouTube the next time and it just lets you know, hey, Chris has made some new videos. If you want to check them out, here they are. And then you can go over there and click on them. If not, you know, you just, you know, you're going to keep uh, looking at your videos anyway on YouTube. But in essence, it's basically just a way to keep in touch with me. So I'm hoping you're going to stay with me here, uh, work with me here on my channel to improve on your watercolors to get better. Again, on my channel, I always mention I cover all the fundamentals of watercolor. So no matter what you're going to be trying to accomplish with watercolors, you're going to actually have a good amount of success here, a lot of success actually on my channel, because I just cover the fundamentals of watercolor each and every week, every month, and even year after year. I've been here for five or more years on YouTube. Many people have really had great success with their paintings on my channel because they're just following along each week and we're doing the same fundamentals over and over and over again, even though we're doing different uh, subject matter. So this, we might be doing seascapes here today. Tomorrow we might be doing flower paintings. The next week we might be doing city scenes, cityscapes, or we might be doing some farm country type scenes and uh, landscape scenes. And then we might even do some portraits once in a while here and there and some figure painting. We do all subject matter here on my channel. But the main thing is I'm covering the fundamentals each and every time we do any videos so that you're really not left guessing on what you need to do with your watercolor painting. You kind of know after a while when you're following on my channel 
all the steps you need to go through your process so that you can actually create a beautiful, uh, successful, and wonderful looking painting. So let's not delay. Let's not wait. Let's uh, get into some real interesting sharp detail as we get into the next portion of our painting, which is going to be the darks of our painting here as we go in this beautiful seascape scene along the water, the bay, the ocean. We are having a fun time, so let's not uh, uh, wait any longer. Let's get started in just a second with our darker washes. Okay, so we're going to get back started again. I just used the blow dryer. I got the whole entire paper dry with just a uh, maybe two, three minutes of using the blow dryer. There's a little bit of a buckling, but it's not too much that I can't work around it. I can actually paint fine with no worries as I go. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'll get a round brush now. Remember, we started out with a large flat brush, a Da Vinci a large flat brush to get our whole entire lighter first preliminary glazing on the paper. Now that's completely dry. Now we're going to work into some smaller brushes. So we're going to use a, uh, I have a Da Vinci here. This is a Charles Reed series um, Escoda round brush, travel brush. It's got the uh, really nice travel brush uh, feature where you can take this and put this into a backpack or a purse or a uh, you know, you might have an art bag that you have all your art gear in, whatever it is. This is beautiful. Travel brush. Charles Reed series. It comes in three brushes, so you get three brushes in the uh, signature series, Charles Reed um, Escoda travel brush. And also, too, I have the Da Vinci Maestro travel brushes, which are the same kind of um, idea where you just have the you can have, actually both of these have holes in the top, so these, once you stow away your paintbrush into your, into the cap, you have some holes there so that the brush dries, and you, again, you can throw this in your backpack, your um, purse, your shirt pocket, whatever it is, these are wonderful. travel brushes. So this is the Da Vinci, Da Vinci Maestro, Pure Kalinske travel brush. It's got a, this is plastic, or you can have the Charles Reed travel brush series by Oscoda. And again, that's brass, beautiful brass. You can take this, it's got a hole in the top. Again, your brush hairs will dry if you throw it in your purse, your backpack, your shirt pocket, whatever works wonderful. Okay, so we have these two. We're going to use these two brushes. So the first thing I'm going to do is we're going to start to get our darks in here. So now we've already mixed our washes for our sky wash. Let's keep those colors going. And then let's start to work in some uh, warmer colors. Let's get some burnt umber, burnt sienna over here. And some French ultramarine blue. And then we're just going to start to uh, work in our darker washes. So this is some. Like that. And let's add some purple here. And then if you add some violet, I tend to add some violet over here. Just in I take some violet, add lots of water, and then just add some violet over here into your sky wash a little bit. And then even a little bit into your water. So 
So if you add some of that ultramarine violet to a little bit of your painting here and there, then you can kind of feel comfortable adding it to the rest of your uh, painting. And then we have some blue and some green. There we go, some blue and, and green and purple. And that's your distant mountains, which are going to be lighter and cooler. So you're going to have cooler colors working into your distant mountains. You don't want your distant mountains to be warm. You want them to be cool, which would be, you know, purple, blue. You can have a little bit of warmth into them too. But you don't want to have the predominant wash to be warmer. You want it to be cooler because it's a distant mountain. Just like that. So you can have some distant mountains, splash a little bit, have some fun with your watercolors. Don't feel like you have to be super tight and worried about every brush stroke. Have a couple splashes like that. Just splash a couple times, take a tissue, blot up a little bit of paint here and there. Just like that. Don't worry. Be happy. Happy painting. Want to have a happy painting. So now you see we're we're developing our distant mountain. Looks good. And again, they're going to be cooler, purple. The distant mountains are purplish, blue, and of course, the mountains that are closer to us. In the middle distance, they'll be darker. So let's just let that relax a little bit and dry our distant mountains. You can see how we're doing our distant mountains here. Like that. There we go. Okay, and then we're going to have some warmer colors here. Some burnt siennas and burnt umbers for the rocks. We're just going to do some rocks over here. Okay, then we got some rocks over here. Alright, so there we have it. Some shoreline here with some rocks. Let's go over to this side of the painting. We're going to do the same thing. Some rocks over here. 
And these should be a little bit cooler, so maybe I lift those up a little bit. And then we have some of our sailboats here. Like that. And I think we're really actually Okay, I'm working my uh, washes carefully. So let's do that. Let's w work our washes carefully. Right now, we're going to do some mountains here that are a little darker. Over here. There we go. Okay, so we're really coming along nicely here. Um, There we go. Okay, we've done plenty of work right now that we're now ready for a break. Let's take a break now. We've done the first wash, the first glazing. We're doing the glazing technique here on this video, on this tutorial. So we did the whole first wash of the sky and the water all at one time. Then we let that dry 100%. I used the blow dryer for about three or four minutes to get it all dry. You can let it dry for an hour or two, or if you want to use a blow dryer, you can do that too. You get this whole first wash dry, and then our second wash right now is the darker darks. You can kind of see we're doing the dark um, portions of our painting here. We're getting in the fishing shacks, the boat houses. We're um, doing some really interesting um, darks and uh, some actual uh, uh, medium darks in this passage here, our second glazing. So now that we have our second glazing underway, 
All it is is a matter of let's take a break and we'll do some more darker darks here in the foreground, which is going to be some rocks here in the foreground. And I think we'll have a completed painting. All we're going to have to do is maybe do a few little touches of maybe some titanium white with uh, some highlights here and there. But I really think we are looking pretty good here. We are in good shape um, with our painting. And as you can see, we have a really nice... Um, So we're doing some really good washes here. Purple. Purple is always great for distant colors to give you some really nice feeling of coolness. As you can see we did this here. We added some really nice some green Right, that looks good. Sometimes I do a little bit of scraping with a um, with a chopstick. just to get some horizontal lines there, like that. All right, let's come back in a second or two. And uh, finish up with our finish up with our foreground washes over here. So that's going to be our next uh, wash. Let's take a break, but then we will do our foreground washes here with some rocks. And I think that's going to be it. And then after that, we just do a little bit of touch-ups with some maybe white titanium white highlights just for maybe some boat masts maybe a few highlights here and there but I think for the most part we are looking really good here all right All right, let's uh, keep working here. I think we can finish up within the next 10 or 15 minutes with this uh, beautiful seascape painting. We have boathouses and sea shacks. We have some sailboats here. We have rocks. We have a coast, beautiful coastal uh, atmosphere here. Let's keep working on it. Um, we had our beautiful glazing technique that we're working with, which again is the first washes. You're gonna do the whole paper 
wet the whole paper, get some beautiful blue washes on there, some sky washes with a little bit of the burnt sienna and burnt umber to gray down some of the washes, get it all along the whole sky wash, the water here, the bay area. This is a nice little inlet, a bay inlet here. And then once you're done with that, then we're going over and we're doing our second glazing. Once that's 100% dry, whether you use a blow dryer or you let it dry for maybe one or two hours, it's up to you. And then uh, once you're done with uh, letting the drying process happen, after you have that first wash all the way complete, then you go back in and you start doing your darker tonal values, like we did here with the sea shacks, the boathouses, the shoreline with the rocky uh, coastline here, browns and French ultramarine blue colors. Now let's get some really beautiful rocks over here in the foreground. So we're going to use more of the same colors, burnt sienna, burnt umber, French ultramarine blue. So we're going to use those same kind of colors and then we're just going to take that and do some rock formations here. So the rocks are usually kind of square shapes like that. And some blue in there too. Warm and cool everywhere. You don't want to have uh, just a warm color like a, a burnt sienna and burnt umber. You want to have some blue mixtures in there too. French ultramarine blue. You want to have some uh, purple in there too. French uh, ultramarine uh, violet. And I think if you have those colors working in your rock formations here in the foreground and you can lift up and I'm just doing some rock formations square edges like that Like that. So I'm just doing some square edges. Right along the bottom here, I just kind of like that. Maybe there's a little bit of a, a little bit of an opening over here. So maybe you don't want to block off the whole bottom. Maybe we leave a little bit of Like that, with a little bit of the opening here, so you can feel like there's maybe a little bit of an open area of water that you can come through. Like that. There we have it. We have some rocks down here on the bottom portion of the painting. We have plenty of beautiful, um, interesting details in the middle area here. What I'll do is I'll take a little bit of the titanium white. So let's use our titanium white tube paint, straight tube paint, no water. You take a little bit of uh, orange or uh, yellow ochre and put a little bit of yellow ochre into the uh, tube, the top of the tube. A little bit of yellow ochre into the top of the tube of the titanium white, straight paint, no water, no nothing. And then you're just going to have a little bit of highlights now. So you can kind of do some, like that, you have some boat, boat shapes here. Some mass for the boats. Look at how good that looks.
so that's really all we did here is we added a little bit of that titanium white with a dry dry needle point brush here I have my Alvaro Castagna at number six or is a number eight number eight needle point brush with a little bit of titanium white and then you can add a little bit of highlights here and there like that and across here just to give you some beautiful shimmering light across the water same over here you add a little bit of that white paint titanium white with a little bit of a yellow ochre in there like that two on the rooftops a little bit just a touch not too much but just enough to Then you can take this, go in, get your French ultramarine blue, a little bit of burnt umber, a nice dark with your needlepoint brush, and you can you can even do some dark darks for your boats here. And I guarantee this is going to be a really fun, beautiful seascape for you to practice on, to um, work on the glazing technique as well. Let's peel off the tape, see how it looks. And I think that looks really nice. You can take this and you can actually uh, we take our pre-cut mat and we put it over the top. And that looks absolutely wonderful. What do you think? A seascape? Gorgeous boat houses we have some boat boat houses here we have some sailboats over here on the right we have distant mountains we have beautiful sky washes flowing water beautiful gorgeous tons of water flowing down the page the paper and then here we have our bay with uh, the uh, ocean and bay colors of the sky reflecting down into the water and then we have some beautiful rock formations here at the very very bottom of the painting to kind of like weigh the painting down it's kind of like an anchor that anchors down the painting makes it feel like it's really set down nicely and that's a really wonderful painting so I hope you're going to try this at home we're so happy you're here I'm, if this is your first time ever coming to my channel thanks so much for stopping by I really appreciate it that you're uh, stopping by and painting here with us here on my channel I'm working here week after week, month after month, and year after year on watercolor painting exclusively. We do all methods, all subject matter. We do flowers, seascapes, landscapes, cityscapes. We do flower paintings, lots of flower paintings. We do um, portrait paintings and figure paintings. We do everything watercolor here. So you just stick with us here. We're having a great time. Week after week, again, month after month, year after year, we're covering all the sharp details that you need with watercolor so that you can really um, get that real solid knowledge base of what you need um, to make your paintings better, to make your paintings look more wonderful, more beautiful, more exciting. And that's what we're doing here. We're constantly working together to get our paintings looking better. We're enjoying the journey of watercolor. So... We'll see you on the next video. Thanks again so much for coming by. Thanks for being with me here, with all of us here. And again, if you're brand new and you're just starting out, welcome. Thanks for coming by. And I always mention, please subscribe. On the right-hand side below, there's a subscribe button. All that does is just make sure you're in contact with us at all times. Your um, YouTube channel, when you open up your next uh, time you open up YouTube, you'll just see that our 
videos are on the right hand side off to the side on your YouTube channel just saying hey Chris made a new video and this way if you want to watch along with us here and paint along with us you'll have that opportunity to do that and you won't lose track of me and what I'm doing and what we're all doing here on this channel so that's why I always mention please uh, subscribe and if you can click on the notification bells this means you'll always be notified when we're making a new video and we're always making new videos every week every month and then uh, of course year after year we're here on YouTube always for you. So we'll see you in the next video. Okay. All right. See you soon. Bye-bye.